All right, we have our fusion parts all laid out, pre-assembly of the tower. This is basically what you're going to get in your box when you receive from UPS or your dealers installing it. You have your front legs, your rear legs, your H-member, collets, backer plates, spanner wrench, front and rear corners. You have your strut system, base plates were minus a, two, a couple because we already put them on the boat. Uh, our swivels here and miscellaneous hardware there. This is what you're going to get in your box and this is so you can identify those parts when you begin to assemble the tower. All right, we're getting ready to put the fusion on this cobalt today. And before we can install our mounts, we got to know what is true center so we can measure down the sides of our boat. And we want to be square, if you will. So what we've done is we've tied the string from the very center front of the boat and tied it all the way back to the transom. And we're using a ski eye as our center here. We feel confident it's true center. And so the string, as you can see, is nice and tight. And then we built what we're calling a, a T-square, if you will. And we built it out two by sixes. And then, of course, we made sure it was square using our carpenter square. You could do it out two by fours, but we like two by sixes. So it's square. We marked the centers on the two by six at both ends, and they're aligned with the string. So now, as we go out to the sides of the boat, we'll drop down in a second and show you how to mark and know what truly is your benchmark for each side of the boat. Okay, now we're over on the side of the boat where our T is coming over so we can benchmark. I've just got a piece of painter's tape here. And I've got my handy carpenter square or something, something like that you can use. And I'm just gonna come over here by the rub rail or a crease on the boat. And I'm just gonna slide up, bump it up against there. And I've made a mark on my painter's tape. What I've done now is I set the benchmark for this side. I'll do the same over there, exactly the same fashion. And what that's gonna allow me to do now, I can measure from this mark forward, whether it be 10, 24, 36 inches, whatever the distance, and know they're consistent side to side because boat geometries and fiberglass are not consistent. So you cannot measure off a radius section or something like that. It's just never consistent, not even windshields. We don't trust them. So by doing this, we have confidence that we're truly centered on this boat. And now we can go forward and install our mounts. Okay, we're gonna talk about our heim joints. Uh, this is a heim joint base here. It's a stainless unit with a jam nut on it. And the purpose of this is actually to take any stresses out of your boat and allow infinite adjustment and flexibility to your tower. They're a great, great option. That's why the Fusion is a premium tower because it's using high-end componentry such as this. So uh, it's, it's gonna allow ultimate adjustment too of the height of your tower because this, but one of the things we wanna see is we want to see as you thread it in, I'm just gonna show you, this is a, a rear leg here. I'm just going to thread it in to show you how simple it is. And we're going to go about half the thread, so you're probably talking three quarters of an inch of thread going in there. So I'm just going to get in there by hand. I'm happy where that's at. And I'll spin this jam nut up there, and I'm ready. I'll, I'll finish adjusting these once I get the tower in the final place. But that's all there is to put a high joint in. All right, I've got our front leg assembly here. This happens to be the starboard side. I went ahead and advanced and put it together, so for ease of video. Start from the top. This is our, once again, our corner here. Look at the beautiful gussets. Once again, stainless welding, the fine, fine materials there. Um, I went ahead and slid the hinge, as you can see spinning here, on the male part of the front leg. And once again, we always want to see this square edge pointing to the outside and towards the center of the tower so it points towards the other leg. And I've got that done. I'll leave it loose for now. And I've got a set screw here. That way we've got four set screws that actually go on this to help you adjust this leg and tighten up when you're done. But that's all we need. We'll do the other one exactly the opposite and get this tower together. Real quick, I want to talk about one of the options on a fusion tower. Um, just show you the big bore, especially on the front leg fitting we have here. I don't know if you can see it, but hopefully you'll see there's a large diameter over a half inch bore going through there. This allows you to run a wiring loom as needed through there. I just wanted to point that out real quick makes it very easy. Of course, coming through the female part of the connector will be no problem. So wiring through the front legs is very, very simple on a fusion. Okay, I went ahead and took a step ahead for ease of understanding on the rear leg assembly. Basically, I put our hinge place in here, and then I've also got my rear leg and my rear corner in place. Note the really nice gusseting on this tower and the stainless. It's really, really gonna give you support as needed. And then, what you're gonna do is you slide these two together, you're gonna slide this hinge over the male pin on this connector, it just slides right on. I've got a set screw there, we'll tighten it up later on. But note, this is the starboard side, so my square edge on here, if you can see it, will always point 
towards the outside. So my square edge is here. And so the, the reciprocating one from the front will be facing this way. You'll see more so why. On this rear leg connection, there is an alignment pin. This is the only place we use these on the rear legs. I went and pushed it in. So this is a rear leg assembly. It's ready to go. My hinge is in the middle, and we'll go ahead and show you a front leg assembly next. Okay, things are moving fast on our fusion assembly. Uh, as you know, we did our corners and legs together earlier, and we've taken our H member, and we backed our threads off. The easy way to remember, there's right and left-hand threads. The right hand of the starboard side has right-handed threads. Just thread them off. And then on the left, you have your left-hand thread. So it's very simple as that goes. Inside these is a collet. We went in and slid our collets on there. Basically, we took these pieces after we slid that off. We slid our cap on, and then we went ahead and slid our collet on. You can see that the tapered part points in and then we slid these assemblies in. But no, there's a couple things we've done along the way. We have our front legs are towards the front and our rear legs are in the rear section of the head. Note the head shows you that's just typically the rear of the tower. So with that said also, we put grease on these threads for when we put our collets and our caps back on. And then we've also done one thing that really helps you out. We measured from the end of the stainless tube before we ins inserted it, we used a Sharpie marker and I could see my hatch marks here. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I'll be able to count my inches or later on when I do the assembly and get symmetry there. So this assembly is ready to go up. The next video I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna have it up. So what I'll be doing is I'll actually slide this thing up and I'm gonna set it with set screws and I'll have it standing up and then I'll put my struts on and then we'll be on the boat very shortly. All right, we've got our tower up. That's how quick and easy it is. We just stood it up and used our set screws to just, just get in place. We haven't taken our collet system and engaged any of that yet. It's not needed. So we've slid those back. Uh, front legs, as you can see, the longer legs. And then here's our bent legs in the rear. Um, I've got my strut assembly here. And we're going to show you how to orient it. Once again, our square shoulders, this point for the front should be pointing right at me. And this point here should be pointing diagonally over here. So they always point towards the inside and out. That's how you always know if you have it right. And the bull hole should be right there facing outward. So I've got my strut in my hand here and it's just loose. I don't want to tie it at this time. I've just kind of made it up. The spinning end or the loose end here is, is on, the on the forward end. So, and the orientation will work that way. So let me just show you if you can see up close, hopefully it's going to show. For this side, I've got, this is the uh, port side, you can see that the angles run, I guess, symmetrical or parallel with each other, if you will. And that's going to allow me to come in here and put this on. Now, watch how easy this is. This tower goes together so easy. I'll take my 1 inch 3 8 screw. It's going to go ahead and put it through there. And I'm just going to lightly thread that in place. Start a thread or so. There's that one. Now I'll come back here, do the same in the rear. I may have to adjust just a little bit. There we go. Put it through there. And I'll come back and tighten those later on once the tower's in place, but I need those in place. And as you can see, I'm already about there, and this tower is virtually after to put my hind joints in. This thing is ready to go on the boat. And so we'll set the width, though, but that's, that's how you put the strut in. The other side's the opposite. But remember, the short end is to the front that swivels, and we'll tighten that up later on. And I'm not using any of my set screws at this point. We'll tighten those up to the finish. All right, we're ready to finish our sub-assembly of our tower before it goes on our boat. To start off with, we know that our rear mount width is 93 inches. We measured at our swivels, and that's where we know it is. For this tower, we want six inches of preload. So that means if we take 93 minus six, we're gonna have 87 inches. So we've taken our tower and slid the bottom of our legs at our hind joints, or rod ends, if you will, to 87 inches. And that's one of the reasons why we do these markings that you see here, these hatch marks, to let us know that we're evenly in on each side, okay? So th that's why we do those little things like that. So now I wanna talk about how you get things a little more formal as you go. So we've got our distances specifically where we want them. So what I did was I went ahead, before I tightened anything else up, I used my set screws once I'm in position to start locking the tower down and securing it. And then here's kind of where the magic comes for a fusion tower. Instead of having to drill holes through stainless, which is a very, very tough material, we're using what we call a collet system. And so here's the collet system. Hopefully you can see it in the camera clearly. This is our collet and this is our capture cap, if you will. And we're gonna go into this, this bore here. 
We've already done the back. And so all we do is once again with set screw set evenly because we want it centered there, we just slide this collet in. And then I would actually, just to go on the boat, I'm gonna go ahead and just gently, gently tap it. Now, I'm using a screwdriver because I know most people at home are gonna use a screwdriver. You should use a chisel, but I know how it goes. Let's be real. And so we're not having to drive this very hard. I'm just gonna do a few taps just to show you that how friendly it'll go in. And then I wanna show you what it would actually look like in, in a form of where I, where I want you to be, left-handed threads on the left-hand side or port side, okay? Take note, so I'm going the opposite direction. I've got about an eighth of an inch, maybe, gap here. That's about where I want. I'm not gonna go really tight yet. I just wanna tap it into a snug and set my set screws, and then just go ahead and put my caps loose down in place. We're really expecting our set screws to do all the work at this time, okay? So this tower is ready to go on. The hind joints are in the ends. And so the next shot, you'll see us actually putting this up onto the boat itself. Okay, we're ready to drill. We went ahead and marked. We used our gasket here and just put it up on our mark, found our centers, marked them out. You can see them here. And we've actually focused or, you know, pinpointed or punched those centers. So now I'm gonna just use an eighth inch drill. I'm actually gonna go through with a forward speed and not a reverse like we'll do with a larger hole. And I'll go ahead and drill to show you how easy it is once I found center. It's just that easy. And then we'll come back in a second and put our other, use our larger bit. All right, we've got our bit here. We're ready to go through with our main hole. I should have used my safety glasses earlier. I'm gonna correct that mistake and put them on now. We don't want you getting any debris, fiberglass, or metal, or anything in your eyes. So. We're gonna go ahead and drill this hole. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in reverse. So it's gonna be a little tougher to drill here. And we're, we're gonna go from there. Set on my hole there. You usually like to find something to pull on a little bit there. And... Check our hole. Looking good, looking good. About through. And there you go. And we'll drill the other hole. And once again, we ran in reverse and we'll do our ball stone to clean it up here in just a second. Okay, we've got our holes drilled. We checked in advance to make sure there were no wires or obstructions to drill in our hole here. That's very important. Always check before you drill. We've got our holes through, we're ready for cleanup, and that's where this grinding stone that you can get at Ace, Home Depot, or Lowe's is important. And we're gonna just dress out this uh, gel coat to make sure that we don't get any fracture propagations. <laughs> Nice chamfer on there. We should have no fracture propagation. We're through, we're more than three eighths of an inch thick. We're ready to install our mount. Okay, we've got our holes drilled, we're ready to go. But before we put it together, let's talk about mounting hardware. First off, we have a beautiful stealth, made in the USA mount here. These things are beautiful and you do not see the fasteners and they're so strong. Once again, they're made in our shop here in the USA. We've got our stainless studs. I've already Loctited that one in, and I've got some Loctite on this. I'm just gonna thread it in by hand, and then you're gonna basically tighten it in with an Allen wrench and let it set up and secure there. Now, what you do have to protect your hull when this mount goes up there is a rubber gasket. Sometimes you gotta force these things on. You can see they're a little tight, not a problem. Then there'll be another rubber gasket that will sandwich on the interior of your hull, and I'm gonna leave that one out for now for convenience. And then we have our aluminum plate. Same thing, you gotta line those up just right. And there you go there. And then make sure you lube up. You gotta put some grease on this thing. This is a stainless nylock on a stainless shaft. Make sure you put some on there because we want them to come off. Tighten that down, compress your hole, and then we're gonna be ready to go ahead and connect to our tower and finish this installation up. Okay, the tower is on the boat. This is exciting. Now what we did was we laid it on its back, lifted it up, and it takes two people, and really maybe three, but two can certainly do it, and we stretched it out like we talked about our preload, and we set 
our first one on here. We just put our, we tightened our um, quick release knob on there, then we stretched over the other side and put it in place. Now real quick, real quick, I wanna talk about the parts here. Of course you have your base, your swivel is right here, and your quick release knob. And so we just stab our quick, re quick release knobs through the heim joints and that's how we connect there. You'll see when you get the hardware. So let's talk about what we're gonna do here real quick. For control, we took this tower and we connected a strap to the top on the ski head. And we, you can see our level up there too, because we're checking our level as we go. And we tied to the back of the boat, a ski eye, or, or you can do anywhere on the back, but to control it. And then we slowly lowered it into place. And we actually, earlier we had some padding here, so make sure we don't scratch our boat. And we went and put our hardware on here. And what we're after is we measure from heim joint the heim joint to find the distance. And one was a little bit over 65 on one side, and one was a little bit under, so we split the difference, and then we can adjust it with our adjustment thread. So, But we went ahead and made a mark for our center here so we know where that's at. And then just to make sure I get it right, I put my gasket up here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and make a quick mark with painters on my painter's tape there. And then I can take this, pull it, lift it up out of the way set the vertical height of the gasket, and we'll drill the hole and then be ready to uh, finish this installation on this tower. All right, we've got our tower on the boat. We've got our set screw set in here. We've got our six or so inches of preload in this tower. Everything's set, we're ready to finish up. So what I've done is I showed you earlier, I slid the collets in, I've got my set screws were already tight there, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and go in here and tighten on my collets. Now I like my collets really tight, Remember that these are left hand thread on the left or the port side, passenger side, right hand thread. So I've always got a member that I'm gonna, in my mind, loosen these. So as I go in there, I've taped these up too. Take note, I'll put painter's tape on because I don't want to mark them up. We supplied this spanner wrench. I'm just gonna come in there and I've kind of got this one already pretty tight. And I like really honestly the tighter the better. Once again, I've already set my set screws, all of them here, so this will not try to rotate. And there you can kind of see I'm, I've greased the threads. Big thing there, grease the threads. And I'm cranking these down. I'm putting pretty much all my weight in there. And you can put more. These things will take almost everything you'll, you'll give them. So I'll step down here and put a load on it. There. Now I'm not above putting a cheater on there and putting more. We've never overdone these collets. And so once I get them tight, this side and that side, of course I checked all my measurements first. I'm happy where I'm at. And my tower assembly will be virtually done as I go back in <clears throat> and tighten all the uh, set screws, make sure your fastener's tight and lock tight where it's required, and this tower will be completion. And that is uh, basically what we want to see there. Okay, we're ready to show you how to lay the tower down. That's critical. So many people have a garage door that they have to clear, and a tower is not gonna go through that. So we're gonna show you how easy it is on the Fusion, and it's critical, and let's show you the steps here. today. I went and took liberties. I'm going to do it by myself. I recommend two people. I went and removed the other leg just for convenience. I'm going to do the same thing here. I've released the set screws. It's ready to go. I'm going to release my quick release knob, and then we're going to lay the tower down. But in advance, I want to say we've got cushions back or, or padding for our towers that goes back so it won't damage our boat when it touches there. So watch how easy it is. I'm going to release my quick release knob. Always have a good control there. Got it. Okay, now I'm gonna hold on. I've got everything loose here, so forgive me, I'm gonna go ahead and toss my quick release knob down there. I'm gonna keep control with this leg here. Don't let it get away from you. I'm just gonna step in here and bring this tower down gently. There it is. Now watch the magic here. I've already released these set screws. Watch how easy. Now I can slide the leg out. I'm gonna go ahead and set it down the boat and we're ready to go in the garage and we can stab it in just that easy too. And that's how easy it is. And one of the great things is our stainless heims allow us not to torque up on your hull as we lay back. So we're never twisting and torquing up on the hull when we're raising and lowering the tower. Fusion tower installation complete. Tower came out great as they always do. It's so strong, you can tell that it's stainless. It's gusseted. It's made here in the USA in our shop. It's a great product. It's easy to install. It doesn't require drilling. I can go on about how great this tower is. Stainless heims down here that make sure that you don't get torsion in your hole. 
the ability to lay it down, easily assemble, disassemble, no drilling required. It's a great tower. It fits a huge width of boats from narrow to wide. The Fusion Tower, you will not regret it. We're ready to go to the lake. We thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video and hope to see you out there on the water. Have a great day. Oh,